So welcome to lesson six. So in lesson six, we'll talk about the LP norms or the P norms. Okay. So don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. So LP norms or P norms on what are in. Let's take a definition. So for a row number P greater than or equal to one, the P norm or LP norm of X is defined by what you can see here all right so if p is equal to one we are going to have the norm of x now p is one so we have one here then the absolute value of x1 you know to the power one is the same as that one so we don't write it then plus the absolute value of x2 up towards xn the one over one is what one so if p is equal to one we have something of this form and this kind of norm is called the manhattan norm or the taxi cap norm or the one norm or the l1 norm okay so if p is equal to two right so now make put p to be two let's see what we will get so you are going to get what you can see here right and you know that when you square any real number you're going to get a positive words value that's the reason why here i didn't bring the absolute value because you will already get a positive value okay so this type of norm is called the euclidean norm or the two norm or the l2 norm or the square norm and as p approaches infinity we have what we call the infinity norm or the maximum norm and that is given by what you can see here okay so for example in r2 right if we let x and y be vectors in r2 then the infinity norm will be the maximum of what the absolute value of x then comma the absolute value of what y and this is called the infinity norm or the maximum norm so so far we have generated the l1 norm the l2 norm and the l infinity norm right from the p norms let's look at their diagrams right their unit spheres let's control unit spheres for them okay so when you take the manhattan norm in two dimension okay so it's given by this right okay so when we say the unit sphere that means that whatever we have here is going to be equal to one so we have this here is equal to what one so if this here is equal to one what are the possible points that we can have okay so note that we are saying that the norm of x1 plus the norm of x2 is one so we are going to consider um integers right integer values to plot our graphs right so that means it can be that x1 is zero or x1 is what x2 is one in our case the unknown world will be one so we get a first point zero one we can consider when x1 is zero and x2 is minus one so the unknown will be what one we can consider when x1 is one and x2 is zero so the unknown will be what one so we have these four points okay so we are going to plot them so we are going to have this point to be what one zero minus one zero zero one and minus one zero minus one zero minus one okay so after getting those points you see our diagram is just going to be moving from here to here then from here to here from here to here and from here to here so this is how the manhattan norm looks geometrically okay all right so now let's do the same thing for the euclidean norm right so in 2d in r2 this is going to be it right so for the unit here this is one so we have root of s1 squared plus s2 squared equals one when we square both sides we have this and you can see this is the equation of a circle with radius one 
So this is going to be the geometric representation of all the L2 norm, right? How it looks like. Very simple. And when you go to the infinity norm, right? So in two dimension, like in R2, you're going to have the maximum of the norm of x1, the norm of x2 is equal to 1. So we can have eight different possibilities. So it can be that s1 is 1 and s2 is 0. So the magnitude, when you take the magnitude of the two, the highest of them will be 1. We can also have this condition, right? So when you take the magnitude of them and you find the maximum, so it will be 1. So using the same concept, we are going to have these eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can verify any of them. And it's true. So when you are drawing the diagram for it soon, we are going to have this. Alright. So where here will be one zero minus one zero. Minus one one zero minus one. Mm, this is min m um, one minus one. All right. Then this is one one. This is minus one one. Okay. So how many points? And this is. 0, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is how the infinity norm is going to look geometrically. Okay. All right. So now we have a question. Okay. So the question says that we should show that. So let me write a question here. So we are to show that the maximum of x maximum of y is a norm. Okay. So one thing I have to note is that this is the infinity norm, right? So this question is t trying to tell us to show that the infinity norm is a norm, right? So let's do that. So the infinity norm is in 2D, is giving us, so it's a norm on R2. So it's given by this, right? So to show that this is a vector norm, right? This is a norm, we have to show that the properties of a norm is satisfied here so the first one is that okay i think i have to write this all over so the first one is that we have to show the word semi-positive definiteness right okay. and it's very easy to show so then we are going to show that so the infinity norm is greater than or equal to zero, right? So let's see. Maximum of x, maximum of y, is always greater than or equal to zero because when you find the absolute value of a number, we always get positive values, right? So no negative values. So that means there is no way that you are going to get a no negative value as the norm. So it means it is always greater than or equal to zero. And it's only zero if x is zero and y is zero, so that the magnitude of x is zero, the magnitude of y is zero, and their maximum is what zero. Okay, so we've been able to show the first property, and the second property is the absolute homogeneity. Okay, so So now you're going to have something like this because of the scalar multiple, okay? And this is the same as
right? And it's the same as writing and this is equal to so this is equal to because this here is a infinity norm right so yes we've been able to show that it is what absolute homogeneous we've been able to show the absolute homogeneity okay so now the next thing for us to do is to prove the triangle inequality okay right so to prove the triangle inequality means we want to show that so let me write it here so you want to show that this holds right okay so to do that we are saying that let x be equal to alpha i and let y be equal to beta i right so it means that the infinity norm of x plus y will be equal to the maximum of what alpha i plus beta i but recall that when we have x plus y this less than or equal to x less than or equal to y so that means that we can write this here we can write, write this equality here in this form, right? When we write it in this form, that means they are going to change the equality towards less than or equal to. Okay. And this is the same as having um, come let me do some cleaning. So this is the same as having the maximum of alpha i plus the maximum of beta i, right? Okay. And this is less than or equal to. So now this is just a repetition here, okay. Right. So now the whole of this is the same as the norm of the infinity norm of x and the whole of this is the same as the infinity norm of what y so we've been able to show that this here is less than or equal to this so the triangle inequality holds so hence shown okay so in our next lesson we'll talk about l p spaces right in the sequence spaces right so thank you very much and see you in the next video